So hello everyone and welcome to my studio or my art desk. <laughs> welcome to my session for Woman Unleashed summer of 2018. What a privilege and honour to be back again with everyone. I have loved uh, having been part of many of, previous, uh, the, of the previous sessions and thank you for having me again Amber. So we have um, discussed briefly in our little intro what I wanted to do with you guys today. And uh, my, the theme for my lesson is uh, finding your voice. Hence you see this little printout and a um, <laughs> little sketch of a cute little whimsical lollipop mermaid. Mermaid, a lollipop. I call them lollipop when I do overly exaggerated large heads. A student of mine once suggested I call the overly exaggerated large head girls uh, lollipop girls because I used to call them overly exaggerated large head whimsical girls and that seemed like a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> so lollipop girls uh, sounded like a good idea. Now before we start, uh, before I start to do some art with you, I just wanted to talk you through my um, a PDF that I've uh, you should also have access to and um, it's basically a little PDF in where I discuss how uh, you can find your voice or re-find your voice when you're feeling creatively uh, stuck or blocked and this may be this is applicable to both beginning artists and more uh, intermediate or uh, advanced artist. Even the advanced artist and master artist uh, <laughs> still get stuck sometimes. But it might be particularly helpful when you're on in the beginning of your artist journey because when you're just starting and you're feeling the call of creativity, I also know that a lot of fear and um, fear can come up for people and it can often stifle them or paralyze them from even starting. So the first session here, or the first section here, uh, first pages, two pages, cover or go over how you might want to deal with and uh, some when you're feeling creatively blocked or stuck. And I do want to add to that straight away that these are just some ideas. There are much, there's many more things you can do. And if this is a, a really strong thing for you, like you're just feeling stuck no matter what, then this is something that you can even like look at if you're in therapy, you know, like these things can go and run really deeply. Now we don't have time obviously for the, on that for this session. So I've given here some ideas as to what you might be able to do to work through creative blocks uh, block and, and finding your voice again or um, make being able to start and that, that to me is a version of finding your voice. And for the second part uh, here is um, so the second part of the finding your own voice um, is about developing your own style. Um, and some of you may have heard me talk about this uh, quite a bit now because I'm run, I run a course called Ever After wherein we are discussing this exact thing into great, great, great depth. So for this section, I just wanted to give you all a kind of light um, touch or lightly, one touch lightly on what helped me develop my own style and how you can kind of uh, what you can look at to help you find your voice when it comes to actually style development. So this section might be more applicable to those of you who have been making art for some time, but it's also applicable to people who are beginner artists in the sense that you this will this is also kind of helpful to help you help inform you what you actually want to do with your creative process and even if you're not quite ready for style development yet it can still really support you learn more about yourself and therefore seed the early for, I was sow the early seeds for your style development in the future so I will briefly talk through the questions and and then we can create a bit of art and and so why I had laid out a little mermaid was because the um, the uh, symbolism of the story of the little mermaids is that she finds her voice in the end so so it's it's kind of a symbolic painting of working through these sort of um, these questions on finding your voice and then we're creating a mermaid to celebrate finding our voice as well. <laughs> All right, so um, this is about when you're feeling creatively stuck and blocked. So I'm a big one, big on uh, helping people uh, become mindfully connected and in touch with their feelings and whatever is going on in their body. So these three questions are first up, 
to connect you with your body and your feelings and emotions and any anything you're experiencing in the body. So imagine you're feeling creatively stuck, you can't start. Before you do anything, I would love for you to connect to your body, take some deep breath, just sit quietly and still for a moment and scan your body like a little mini meditation and notice what's coming up for you. So before we make any practical changes, I would love for you to send some just to connect with the feelings and the emotions. Do not gloss over them. They're there to tell you something, to uh, let you know that something's up for you. And um, I myself am still very much learning how important it is to acknowledge feelings, needs, emotions and thoughts and to be really present in the body. I am someone absolutely who has for years just glossed over this. Uh, it's going, yeah, 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 whatever, you're feeling nervous. Come on, let's get going, crack on. You know, like a very dismissive, <laughs> I've been very dismissive of my body and feelings and emotions. And so I'm still very much a work in progress uh, and amping this practice up, in fact, uh, now, nowadays. So I'm 42 and uh, becoming more and more and more mindful and slowing down to allow my body its voice. Oh my God, <laughs> that is crazy. I did not practice that, you guys. <laughs> so allow my body its voice. It's the same, finding your voice. That is just a crazy coincidence. I said that and I was like, that is just too crazy. I did not, I did not script this. <laughs> so anyway, so this here, these three questions would help you um, to connect with your body and notice the feelings and needs. So and the first question is make just notice what's happening. Then for the second part of that, for each feeling and sensation, you welcome it and don't judge it. Don't dismiss it. Don't tell it to hurry up. Just say hello to the feeling and just allow it to be there freely. You could name it like, oh, sadness is there or a tightness is there or excitement is there any emotion you notice or a sensation or a feeling or it's it feels hot in my neck it feel my hands feel sweaty these kind of things just allow these feelings to be and these sensations to be maybe name them and say hello sadness hello sweaty hands just acknowledging that this is all present and then you um, are invited to send compassion and empathy to yourself your feelings and your thoughts and any needs that come up in relation to feeling stuck so a loving message like, I understand, you know, my hands are sweaty and that is okay. A loving doesn't have to be overly um, sappy. <laughs> Just, I understand there are st there's sweaty feelings or uh, something like, I know there is sadness and my sadness is okay or my sadness is loved or something about empathic holding of your emotions or your experiences. So before, if you're really feeling stuck, uh, about uh, creatively spend some time with your inner world your inner body your inner experiences and just hold it with compassion allow it to be and then when you kind of feel like wow okay I've done that it doesn't have to take more than about 10 minutes you can then continue on to the rest of the tips so here are just simply some very practical tips to help you um, deal with creative block. So I'll just touch on them briefly and go through them and you can read this um, more slowly on your in your own time. So uh, I talk about often creative block can have to can be related to um, comparing your work to other people's work. And this is a complete mood killer, a complete creativity killer. Uh, we all tend to know this but still find it quite difficult to you know stop comparing ourselves. So I, I, I sometimes invite people or recommend that they actively stop following the people that they inspire that they feel inspired by or that they particularly the ones where where they notice that the I am not good enough fairy or thoughts come in and this is no way a negative uh, you know in, in energy towards the people that are inspiring you and make but make you feel not good enough they don't do that actively but you may just want to pause so you may want to pause on following any anything anyone on social media that make you feel lesser than no one is saying that they do that intentionally but that's it can it sometimes helps when you just unfollow or pause people for a while so that you can focus on your own process so so once you've unfollowed these kind of people what you then want to do is hone in on your own process and the joy of creating and 
try and uh, take on a much more process-oriented um, uh, creative process that rather than an outcome-focused uh, process. Because an outcome-focused outcome process can be make you a lot more rigid in your creative style uh, and it, it, it paradoxically, it often causes you to create paintings you do not like just because you're coming in with a very uh, preconceived idea of what the outcome must be and therefore you're working within a very limited sort of scope of your own idea. So uh, by going in with a process focus, you know, focus on process and joy of creating, you often end up in more enjoyable paintings because you've not limited yourself or put yourself in a box of this is what it must look like. So that is related to the um, comparing your work to other people's work. Okay, so uh, the other thing I wanted to say about the comparison thing, there's a really great um, quote by John Acuff who says, don't compare your beginnings to someone else's middle, which is just a lovely, um, a kind of a reminder that, you know, you sometimes do that thing when you go, that person's art is so amazing, my art is not amazing, um, and therefore I shouldn't make art, or I feel stuck or paralyzed. But what you don't remember, what you're not realizing is that the person you're com comparing your art to may have had five or ten more years of practice on you. So it's sometimes you're not com fairly comparing, um, and therefore. Just, just keep that in mind, and really, I would suggest to actually unfollow people if you're feeling not good enoughness come up when you watch, look at their stuff. Okay, so the second um, tip I like to give is it's particularly when people are have sort of a blank page in front of them and they're sort of paralyzed and don't know how or where to start. And sometimes what I like to suggest is for people to have a play journal before they create some, like, I don't know, today we're going to make a, a mermaid. So the point is making a mermaid. But if you're feeling really stopped by that white page, I would suggest you get a play journal of some sort, perhaps with paper that isn't too expensive, and you just play in this journal with no expectations, no um, preconceived ideas of what you're going to do. And so you're getting, so you take maybe some crayons and you just start to scribble and then you add some water and you revel in the beauty of the colors or you spray some ink through stencils. And so you're basically reminding yourself and teaching yourself to enjoy the process and also by just making a start that way it's often like okay I've broken through that white page fear and there's a freeness a freedom and a playfulness that comes up when you do that that allows you to be more playful and freer in your work so that is another uh, tip I wanted to give you all right then here's the don't think so much um, sometimes it's simply your thoughts and your self-talk is too noisy, too loud, too confusing, too interfering. So I suggest also that people take uh, up mindfulness and or medita meditate, or you want to maybe take a break and listen to some music, try to kind of get more of a, uh, a one more, one focus rather than letting your mind constantly comment or interfere with your comment on or interfere with your creative process. So it's about calming down and bringing, calming down the thoughts as much as you can and coming back uh, to a quieter mind so that you can focus from that place. Now I did say here, don't compare and unfollow people that inspire you, but m point number four is sometimes you feel creatively blocked because there is no inspiration or you just don't know what to make. I've heard many people say that. What do I make? What do I create? I just don't have any ideas. And for that reason, um, I do also recommend that you might keep uh, a, 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 a sketchbook with inspiring images or photos and words and music, poetry, lyrics, uh, anything that inspires you that you that you see in your daily life. It could be in nature, it could just be like a pattern on a fabric or, um, I don't know, a texture on a wall. Anything you see that inspires you, you can take photos of it while you're out and about um, and keep it in a sketchbook or on a folder on your computer or something like that that you can use to help you get inspired when you're stuck from an inspirational perspective. Uh, I also suggest that you can start a prompt jar or you can join sites that set challenges. 
uh, there's lots of ways that you can kind of just feel prompted or you can join like an ATC swap we're running one as well and then you get a theme so someone gives you a theme and that can then prompt you to to find new imagery and that kind of stuff mm. and then finally I have another um, tip that I find quite helpful when I'm creatively blocked and really stuck and I've tried all the other things and that is actually if you've ever done if you've ever made a painting in your past that you've really liked and loved creating and that there were techniques in that that you really loved as well is um, if I'm really stuck I just I, I look at through all my images of my paintings and look at painting that I remember just loving making so much and then I sit down and then I try to do something really similar or I try to recapture the the kind of the emotion of the painting or I try to use the exact same techniques and uh, because I'm not very good at actually copying <laughs> my own my other people's work or my own um i end up kind of creating a new painting anyway but i'm i'm kind of just responding or interacting with a painting i made in the past and so that then re-inspires me or i recapture something from that time so i really like that method actually to get out of creative block and when i feel creatively stuck okay so i hope this is a little bit helpful for those of you who might be creatively stuck and um uh, are trying to find their voice again to just basically start creating or re start restarting again now and then finding your voice when you want to develop your own style as i just said before the, there are many many elements to style development and each element deserves its own book if you will <laughs> so um, i'm obviously only touching lightly on on um, the concepts of style development um, but they may help you anyway so let me go through the points. So if you are sort of an established artist or you're still a beginner artist, but you are thinking about, well, what sort of thing do I want to do? I encourage you and invite you to, uh, first up, ask the right question. <laughs> so often people ask, well, how do I develop my style? And I always like to re re redirect people to asking a different question, which is, what am I so, what do I love creating so much that it makes my soul light up? And in my career as an artist, uh, I have really come to learn that the your style is seems to be the culmination of you. You, you when it comes to everything you've, you love, everything you've been inspired by, everything you've been passionate about, but also everything you've experienced and possibly like things like that have happened to you in your childhood or some things that are still unresolved for you. There's everything about you culmination of you or aspects of you it doesn't even have to, it doesn't have to be everything that you are but aspects of you you are the key to your style is what i'm trying to say so when you are looking to develop your own style what you're looking to do is to deepen the connection with yourself and your understanding of yourself who you are what you want to do what you want to what you want your art to say what your art does for you what 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 does it help how what is it, how does it help you um, and so this is the uh, redirection <laughs> of a question that I ask people or say to people. What you want to do is um, ch change the question. And I have added here after question two a whole list of questions that you can ask yourself to help you uh, learn more about yourself and get a deeper understanding and connection with yourself to be able to find your voice, to, to, to really understand, all right, this is what I'm doing. You know, when I create art, I have done this quite a bit where I look at my work. I've, I've, I'm just grabbing a painting here. This is a painting I've done recently. And there is, there are, I can tell you about, you know, why this has been created, what it means to me, what these tiny little elements mean to me, what happened for me when I was creating it, you know, what, you know, and so I won't go into it right now, but um, you become, to develop your style, you, be, you have to become intimately familiar uh, and connected to yourself and your history and your reasons why you, why you do the things you do and why you love the things you love and what you're trying to, you know, say and convey with your art. So, Question two here, I say, explore what you love. So here we're saying, what do I love? And here we're going to like really explore it and uh, go into it. So let's say if you're currently loving, I don't know, painting flowers. Well, what techniques do you love doing it? What colors really speak to you? So you're going deeper with that other, with, with this question and with these questions. And then for question three, this is another um uh, tip. So when you're wanting to develop your own style, 
um, it is definitely a good idea to make a lot of art and um, make series after series and you can like I mean sometimes I suggest again if you like for instance you can redo this painting over and over and but but with different angles or maybe the girls on this side or you know different colors or different techniques so create a lot of art and and modify and change and love and sub add and subtract and uh, learn as you go be, be mindfully aware of your joys and dislikes likes and dislikes and as you do that, the more you make, you'll, you'll evolve imagery, you'll, you'll change and develop particular elements about, you know, I don't know, the faces you make or the style of flowers you make. And then by combining and mixing it up, eventually you'll, you'll, you'll create something that is very recognizably yours, which is then the style, which actually leads me to point four. Uh, it says you expect your passions and interests to change. So... Here I'm saying that, so here I'm, I'm in, in question three or point three, I'm sorry, I'm not question. Um, I'm talking about how you'll develop and evolve your your imagery and your or, and your color palettes and all these kind of things. But here as well in, in point four is, is also be okay with and expect even your passions and interests to change um, and not be too afraid of that because some people think they have to settle on a particular type of style once they have found something that they really like. but if you just keep your own passion and your own interest as the 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 stick you follow or the 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 carrot is not quite the right word the thing you follow then you know that you'll be okay so for instance i'll show you i um i have become well i've always so i've always been fairly interested in um abstract art but i find it quite elusive and difficult sometimes to work to work through uh, and so I go back and forth between mostly I do uh, don't do abstract art but once in a while I'm like oh I have to do abstract art so recently I made these and though so um, this is not very typically recognizably mine yet people could see that it was mine because of uh, number one the color palette and also the kind of uh, cute sort of extra things like the um, the crown here and the butterfly wing there and the hanging hearts and stars. So there are elements that are sort of really recognizable in my artwork that also were brought into this. So eventually, see, so I have this here. This, these are the kind of face guys, right? Oh, face guys. <laughs> Uh, portraits and, and, and this kind of style. Now this is actually quite an unusual style for me anyway because I don't normally use these colors. So this is also an evolution. Let me actually show you any other arts. Uh, I don't know, this one is not finished, but um, you know, here is another. So if I do girls and, and this, and oh yeah, you saw the mermaid here. So these are all sort of like similar-ish, you know, you can recognize them. And here, even here, I did the constellation. So it's funny. So here I ended up with a constellation and also in there. So basically what I'm trying to say is, do not be f afraid of your uh, your style or your interests changing. Th this is still part, your, your style um, is still recognizable and will evolve or or is, is some kind of like a, somehow like a, uh, maybe like a purple period or something. You know how Picasso had his blue period, you know what I mean? So here's my bird period. <laughs> Basically, do not be afraid of it because the more you work, the more series you do, and the more you you bring in elements that you sort of repeat, repeat, uh, that you repeat, such as the butterfly wing in my case, or the hanging hearts and stars, are tend to be pretty much present in most of my work. Your style is your style is still recognizably your style and it can morph it's okay to morph and eventually become completely unrecognizable uh, you know or unrecognizable what i mean is no longer very similar to your very early work that is to be expected and is okay so and then here i also kind of comment on how the beauty of it is that you know the amalgamation of all these different kind of aspects that you've worked on that kind of combined will become recognizably your work and your style and the culmination of who you are and so you would only expect that to change anyway as you grow older you have more experiences you bring in more things your interests and your tastes change and so your style sh should and would would and should ref should and would whatever <laughs> reflect that 
Right, so, and then my final comment on this is that please allow, give yourself time. So style development isn't a, an overnight thing. You know, it needs to mature and it needs to, you need to play. You need time to play and explore and understand yourself and connect with yourself and grow and evolve yourself. And so your soul will your style. So it, it can, you know, take time. Don't, if you just, if you've just picked up a brush last week, don't expect yourself to have a really set in stone and very clear style within the first month. That would be very optimistic. Um, but I will say that the more art you make, the faster it goes. So the more you dedicate your time, so the more you more art you make, the quicker your art will be a calm, sort of have recognizable aspects to be your style or yours. So uh, this give time is quite dependent on how much art you make. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit. Please refer to the PDF um, that is should be available on the on Amber's site as well. And let's now make some art. So I wanted to um, create a little mermaid with you who has found her voice. And I will be working in um, this this is a journal it's a uh, 9 by 12 journal but you can work on uh, like single sheets you do not have to work in a journal I'm just I'm just uh, bringing out the, this journal because I would like to work in it uh, this is my ever after journal <laughs> lots of uh, fairy tale type characters in here apart from this one although I am a fairy tale this is based on me it's a very stylized portrait of myself Anyway, so I thought we'd uh, create a little mermaid, but I want to create a mermaid similar to this one, which because I think she's so cute, like a lollipop, really large headed mermaid with a tiny little body. Um, and so you can work on uh, nine by 12 or smaller, uh, would be seven by five maybe, or even larger, 16 by 12. Now, and before I will, we will do this as a time-lapse um, thing because I want me enough time. I don't, I'm not allowed to take up three hours ha, ha, ha. <laughs> on this summit. So I just wanted to, before I'm starting to time-lapse, I'm going to just um, show you the basic design of a mermaid like this. So by sketching it out. So... The head is going to take up a large part and it's going to be a lollipop girl so she's going to have like a round almost circular head. Allow for some space on either side for her hair. And then uh, what I like do to like doing is I like to draw a, th a, th a vertical line through her head but then also we're going to do a little bit of a curve. Oops. Here will be her neck. And then her mermaidy body will have a bit of a, you know, like a mermaid has a sort of swimming. She's swimming, right? So she's sort of, so she has a bit of a curve. You see, it's like a J, a J shape. And then what I like to do is she's going to get a tiny body. So she has a little neck. And then for me, how I like to break down this type of body is her upper chest or her upper, yeah, torso is sort of a bit like... Um, he-Man, you know, like those 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 figurines that are He-Man, the power and the something of the universe. So just do a He-Man-y type thing. And then here, this midriff, this is where the tummy is, but there is actually a midriff area. And then here she'd have, you know, this would be her, if she was a human, her hips. And then, he, and now I'm actually not following the line as much, so we could make her slightly more curved. Or it doesn't have to be that curved, but it could be a little bit more curved. So I'm building her more this way, this way uh, to the side, and then her um, her legs that are actually her mermaidy fin things, whatever. What is this called in Mermaid Land? What is this? Her mermaid, her mermaid bottom, her mermaid bottom goes like that, comes together here, and this comes out either just as a line or as a whatever, and then we do the fishy fishy fin things there. Something like this. And then once once I've got the basic sort of 
shapes in, I will then refine it. Uh, but I will do that uh, in a moment when we start to uh, when I do time lapse. And then for her arms, I kind of do a shoulder joint, shoulder joint, a uh, upper arm, and then a, and a elbow joint. And then I kind of have her arm, the lower arm sort of sideways. But I make them not very, I make them quite kind of suggestive. So I'm not making it super detailed because it's detailed. Because it's quite sm small anyway. But one arm is slightly kind of up in the air, like higher up. And the other one I, for variety, make that one sort of slightly more straighter down. And the hands, however, can go kind of like this, you know. Okay, so she's sort of ho hovering in the in the water. Okay, and then for her face, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to go in the middle of the circle, and then again and again, and then I'm going to go large, I'm going to make her give her massive eyes, because this is a lollipop girl, so <laughs> she's going to have massive eyes. And then her nose there, and her mouth is kind of here. I'm doing very sketchy now, very quick sketch, just so you get the first sort of idea of it all. Can make her slightly more smiley. So, and then for hair, oh, she's cute. And then for hair, we're gonna kind of, I'm gonna give her a sort of a side parting again. She can have curly hair, or she's gonna have hair that's gonna go flow up. So she's going to have flowy uppy hair because she's in the water. Whatever whatever you want to do, it doesn't have to be. She could be in calm water when when the hair is, is like flying down, you know? Could be this way, whatever. So so that will be roughly the, the, the design, the design, the design. And um, yeah, that's how I break down her simple kind of body and her head. So let's get started and I will, like I said, um, time lapse the rest of this video so that we're not um, going over time. And so thank you for being with me here today. And if you um, love what I did, hope to see you on some of my uh, other courses on www.willamine.org. Okay, thanks everyone. Enjoy.
so here she is everyone a uh, little mermaid with her um, voice she's found her voice I really like how she came out um, yeah I decided to go over the two page spread in the end because I had a second page there that wasn't originally my plan originally I was gonna go and stay within this frame but ended up doing this and I really like that I had that extra space because I do, could do more with the hair and make it nice and flowy um, yeah, struggled a tiny bit with color scheme, the yellow versus the blue and the green. I want to, I, I find, I need to find the right yellow and the right greeny turquoisey blue to, to go together. But in the end was happy with the choices I made. Uh, same with the green for her. And there's a bit of purple in here as well. So purple is a nice, um, complementary color to, to yellow and also somewhat green. I, I always think it's a, a nice combination depending on where you go on the, color wheel a type of purple can kind of and a type of green can kind of pretty much become complementary so I like that combination and I like uh, the yellow versus this tur turquoise so the whole um, combo worked out for me I'm also happy with her sweet face and the rest of her and so yeah so I hope you enjoyed doing a little mermaid with me today. I hope you enjoyed my overall session. And if you did enjoy, please come and find me on www.willowing.org. So thank you so much for hanging out with me today and uh, sending you sparkles and love for the rest of your week and month. Bye bye.